Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss something a little bit more unusual, at least for this channel. We're going to discuss this report right here, with a simple title, Analysis of a Metallic Specimen. And as you can probably tell from the title, it's kind of related to UFOs or UAPs, as they're known today. And specifically, it's about this. A somewhat nondescript piece of metal that for basically 80 years now is claimed to have been retrieved right after the 1947 Roswell incident. The incident, as many of you know, for many years has been speculated to essentially be some kind of a UFO conspiracy theory. And though in this video we're actually not going to talk about this incident pretty much at all, this particular piece has been claimed to have come from there and has obviously been claimed to have been extraterrestrial in origin, as in produced by aliens not from some kind of a meteorite. Although realistically speaking, there is really no evidence for any of these claims, and so all of this was basically word of mouth. But nevertheless, for the first time ever, we now have an official chemical investigation finally determining what's inside of this and presenting evidence for where it probably came from and what exactly this is. And so in this video, let's basically discuss this from a scientific perspective and basically focus on the results and what exactly all of this means. Naturally though, in this video, I'm going to try to stay as unbiased as possible and not make any claims for the existence or non-existence of alien extraterrestrial intelligence. But first, it's really important to mention who's been investigating this and why this is actually an official scientific study. So back in 2022, the government established AARO, all the main anomaly resolution office that's part of the Secretary of Defense and whose main goal is to essentially investigate various anomalous reports including UFOs or other unusual phenomena. And so yeah, this is basically the X-Files, for reals. Initially headed by Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, a physicist and a professor at University of Georgia who is quite interested in this phenomenon as well. But a few months back, in November of 2023, he essentially stepped down as a director, publicly stating that after two years, he found no evidence of aliens or any kind of a UFO cover-up and that there was basically nothing for him left to do. But AARO still exists and is still trying to conduct additional studies, despite basically finding no empirical evidence for the existence of unidentified anomalous phenomena. This, by the way, was probably the most comprehensive recent scientific study on this phenomenon, with the results concluding that there is really nothing going on out there. But the point I'm trying to make here is that these were actual scientific studies, focusing on evidence and facts, and so far they found nothing. But when it comes to physical evidence, this one was actually pretty big. For many years, or really for many decades, this was alleged to be a component recovered from a crashed extraterrestrial vehicle back in 1947. And it was also allegedly exhibiting unusual properties associated with anti-gravity phenomenon. And these were obviously big claims and had to be physically investigated. And here I was super curious to find out how exactly people thought it works in terms of anti-gravity and what exactly is happening inside. And well, it turns out that initial analysis from many years ago determined that this is some kind of a magnesium alloy. And it was also claimed to contain an unusual crystalline structure of bismuth, which then turned it into something incredible. That crystal of bismuth apparently served as what's known as the terahertz waveguide. I'll explain in a second exactly what this is. But basically, by being this unusual terahertz waveguide, it was supposed to create unusual vibrations inside and produce anti-gravity effects. With all of this also able to reduce the inertial mass of the entire material, thus basically making it levitate above any surface. And all of this was claimed to come from bismuth crystals inside of this magnesium alloy. So yeah, big claims and pretty big words. And here we have to take a side note and briefly discuss terahertz frequencies and of course terahertz waveguides, the main claim behind this unusual material. So terahertz waves, also known as T-ray radiation, is the light frequency that's somewhere between microwave and optical wavelengths. And in the last few decades, it's actually generated huge amounts of interest for a lot of different industries, with the biggest two being telecommunication and medical fields. So, for example, when it comes to telecommunication, this would be essentially some kind of a 6 or even 7 generation technology being able to produce incredible speeds and achieve incredible bandwidth. But unlike radio frequencies, terahertz radiation is also usually absorbed by gases including atmosphere, within just a few meters. And that's because terahertz frequencies are actually also associated with the natural vibration of various molecules. And so in terms of practical use for telecommunication, there are still a lot of shortcomings. 
But because this corresponds to the vibrational frequency of various molecules, especially large molecules, that will usually have very unique terahertz signatures, in theory, it can actually be used in medical fields to scan pretty much anything in regards to biology. In other words, terahertz frequencies present us with an opportunity for an incredible scanner, passing through pretty much most clothing and even packaging, and allowing us to see what's inside in terms of molecular composition. So basically think like an MRI scanner that can actually see every single molecule and determine what molecule it is. But despite these incredible promises, for essentially decades now, we've never really had any major breakthroughs yet, essentially placing terahertz frequencies into a kind of a unexplored territory. It's basically located right between microwaves and infrared spectra, two well-developed frequencies that have been used in various technologies for many, many years. And so in some sense, terahertz waves are supposed to bridge the gap between microwaves and optical wavelengths. But trying to develop the technology that can actually control these waves, guide them, and also detect them easily, has been kind of challenging. And so trying to discover this so-called terahertz waveguide, basically something that can help us transport these waves from one point to another easily, has been a source of many different studies for many, many decades. And specifically, for many decades, material scientists have been trying to discover this magical material that can serve as the waveguide for terahertz frequencies. Material that would be cheap and easy enough to produce, and that could easily guide these waves without causing major disruption. But I guess the question is, so why can't we just use some kind of a metal already, and why doesn't it actually work? Well, when it comes to metals, they can easily transmit microwave frequencies, but when it comes to terahertz frequencies, they unfortunately have an extremely high ohmic loss, or basically the resistance increases dramatically, which causes terahertz frequencies to drop off quite dramatically even over a short distance. Likewise, various polymers, or even glasses, usually work very well with optical frequencies and the infrared frequencies, but produce very high absorption losses when it comes to terahertz frequencies and so finding the right material has basically been the biggest problem. And so naturally, when there's a claim that maybe there is a material that someone discovered somewhere out there that seems to be a perfect terahertz waveguide, that material would have to be investigated to determine if we finally found something that can actually work. And that's where this sample comes in. Like I mentioned previously, this was claimed to be a perfect terahertz waveguide, able to do all of this through some kind of a crystalline structure of bismuth, inside this magnesium alloy. And this particular sample was finally sent to a government lab, specifically the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, back in 2022. And so now, after two years, the results were sent back to AARO, with the conclusion basically being that, first of all, definitely not aliens, and second of all, um, yeah, also not a terahertz waveguide either. And though this alloy was indeed made out of magnesium and did contain bismuth, it did not contain any crystalline structure, and the overall composition did not indicate that this has non-terrestrial origin. Or just to rephrase this, the conclusion here was that this was actually made on Earth and was actually an engineered alloy for very specific purposes. And so I guess the question is, but why? What's the purpose? Well, because we don't actually know the origin of this particular alloy, everything at this point is guesswork, but in this case, the actual guesswork does make a lot of sense. So, because this contains signs of engineering and very distinct layers of magnesium, zinc and bismuth, with the structures only microns in thickness, but also because this doesn't seem to be a very complex material and was not produced using technologies from the last few decades, here the suggestion is that this was most likely produced sometime during or before the Second World War, when the United States saw a tremendous research and a lot of domestic interest in trying to produce some kind of an alloy for various airframes, engines, weapons, and even rockets, using different types of alloys. And so sometimes between 1915 and the end of World War II, a lot of this research was focused on magnesium alloys. All of this is mentioned in that study you can find in the description. But many of these experimental alloys failed for different reasons, such as, for example, various types of corrosion and various types of cracks during stress testing of materials in order to see if they can survive various stressful environments a typical airplane experiences on annual basis. But at the same time, a lot of these tests and a lot of records of these tests have been actually lost, 
especially if those experiments failed. And because of this, it's impossible to verify the historical origin of this little piece. But because we know that early research did focus on magnesium, but eventually magnesium turned out to be not a good alloy, this potentially explains why this piece exists, why we don't actually know much about it, because it was basically a failed test, but more importantly, why magnesium alloys are generally not really used in aviation anymore. And though obviously this is maybe a bit of a speculation on the part of researchers, right now this is indeed the only reasonable explanation we have for what exactly this is. But I guess most importantly, no unusual properties and no unusual emissions were detected anywhere, and this is definitely not some kind of a super material containing perfect crystals. Instead, it seems to be a decades-old alloy from some kind of a failed experiment. With all of this further confirmed using isotope analysis, comparing this to various meteorites and various modern alloys, overall confirming its terrestrial origins, and most importantly, origins from the solar system because the isotope composition was identical to everything else we have on Earth, including various meteorites. And because this analysis was extremely rigorous and involved multiple layers of research for basically like two years now, I don't think there's really anything else left to add. This is extremely likely some kind of a test object, possibly a product or a byproduct of early manufacturing from 1930s, 1940s, and was most likely part of research in aerospace industry. Industry that at first focused on magnesium before switching to other alloys. So yeah, unfortunately, not aliens, not extraterrestrial or extrasolar in origin, and unlikely to have come from 1947 Roswell incident. But you can read all of this by yourself in all of the links in the description below. And so yeah, definitely a cool study and I guess a cool conclusion to this unusual piece, but it's unlikely to change a lot of minds when it comes to ufologists, as I've learned the hard way when I initially tried to make a lot of UFO videos back in the days. Anyway, on that note, once there are some additional discoveries in regards to this topic, we'll come back and talk more about this, but only if it's super scientific and does involve rigorous studies. And so anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.